Hey Canucks fans and welcome to Clay's Canucks Commentary for Monday, October the 23rd. Thanks for your great feedback to yesterday's video on the Sedins being phased out of the lineup. Got some really strong and good feedback to it. And the general consensus was agreement with my sentiment that it's important that this team moves away from the Sedins as they rebuild, as they transition, as they move towards younger players and a younger roster. I, post, I took the bold step of posting that video on the Canucks.com message boards. And I say bold because for any of you that have been on that message board or contribute to it, you know that that's a tough place to be sometimes. Some people are there quite ruthless, they're strong-willed, they're opinionated, they're very knowledgeable, but thankfully they went easy on me and they gave me both uh, positive feedback and constructive feedback to the video. But enough about yesterday's video, let's talk about today's video and to do that, let's talk about last night's game. The Canucks beat the Detroit Red Wings 4-1 at Little Caesars Arena. They had a really strong second period in particular, scoring three unanswered goals to break the 1-1 tie and to cruise to that 4-1 victory. Sven Berchi had his first two goals of the season. Jake Vertanen had a goal. He had eight shots on goal and a thunderous hit on Nicholas Cronwell, putting him back on his butt, which I'm sure people were happy about. And Derek Dorsett added to his team-leading total of four goals. He now has five on the season. The only negative that came out of the game is defense and choice stature. Came out of there with a knee injury after going knee on knee with Thomas Tartar. I just love saying that name. I don't think I even say it right. And he's gone back to Vancouver. Stetcher has for some uh, re-evaluation examination on his knee. Look for Alex Biega to draw into to the game in Minnesota tomorrow night at the last game of this five-game road trip. Now we have Alex Edler and Troy Stetcher on the sidelines on the blue line. Let's talk about scoring. I mentioned Derek Dorsett with his five goals. He leads the team after eight games with the five goals and then followed by Thomas Vanek and Bo Horvat with three apiece. After eight games, the Vancouver Canucks have scored 23 goals, and that's an average of 2.9. And if they continue at this pace, I'm not sure if they will, but if they continue at this pace, they will finish with their highest total in a few years. Now, 2.9 isn't like barn burning, isn't the highest firepower ever, especially when you compare them to the Toronto Maple Leafs who have 4.6 goals a game, Tampa Bay who has 4 goals a game, and even New Jersey, the surprising Devils, have 3.9 goals per game. So all these teams have more than a goal per game, more than the Canucks. But if you look at the Canucks totals for the past four seasons, aside from one of those seasons, they finish in the bottom three of the league every year. Check this out. Last year, the Canucks scored 182 goals, average of 2.2 goals per game, good for 29th, second worst in the league. The year before that, 191 goals, 2.3 goals a game, 29th in the league again. The year before that, 2014-15, Willie Desjardins' first year, that was the surprising year where the Canucks actually finished second in their division. They actually scored 242 goals, good for 2.95 a game, and that was good for sixth in the league. And the year before that, the infamous John Tortorella year, 196 goals, 2.4 a game, good for 28th in the league. So in the last four seasons before this one, going uh, oldest to youngest, or oldest to most recent, we've gone 2.4, 2.95, 2.3, and 2.2. So you can see with the 2.9 that the Canucks are on right, that pace right now, it'll be very close to their total from three seasons ago. And that season, the Canucks made the playoffs to everyone's surprise. So will this 2.9 total, this average, hold up? I say it could. You know, I don't think Derek Dorsett's going to score one out of every two games as he's been doing. But you have guys like Horvat, Vanek, Besser, Vertanen now. And I would even say Gagne. Some of those guys can put the puck in the net. And I expect them to do so more going forward. So yes, Dorsett's, I think the average is going to regress towards the mean a little bit. But I also see guys like, like I said, Horvat and Vanek and, and Besser and Vertanen. They have a lot to offer and I think they can be scoring more as the season goes on. Obviously, you need goals to win. You need good defense to win too. And so far, Jacob Markstrom has done his part in, in posting some very strong performance recently. So what I'd love to hear what you think. What do you think the Canucks are going to wind up with in terms of a total of number of goals? Will they stay at that 2.9, 3.0 per game? That would mean about 240 goals per year for the year. Or do you think they're going to come back to their norm of the past three of the four seasons and that's a total in the 180 to 190 range would be a 2.2 2.3 goals a game i know it's early eight games is a small sample size but in those eight games the canucks are four three and one good for nine points and as of today they are sitting in a playoff spot yes i, I know we're only 10 percent through the season so canucks fans let me know what you think leave a comment below if you haven't done so already i invite you to subscribe to this channel and i hope you have a great day
God bless and go Canucks go.